Now, just to tie this up in a bit of a bow, I'd love you to draw a, um, a bit of a table with me. Table's going to need three columns. Um, we'll ignore the first column for a second. The second column will be change of scale. The third column will be change of origin. And then what we're going to do is think about the effect of this on each of the things that we calculated. So there's going to be expected value. How does that change? There's going to be variance. How does that change? And then there's going to be standard deviation. How does that change? Okay. So this is what our table is roughly going to look like. Okay, huh, I can move again, that's nice. So, here's what this looks like. Let's fill this in. We started off with change of scale, and we were thinking about, oh, what happens if you change from meters to centimeters? But you could change for anything, right? You could go from like miles to kilometers, or you could go from um, mils to, no, that's not a good example. Um, oh yeah, mils to liters or something like that, right? In other words, your data stays essentially the same, but your scale of your graph changes, your numbers are all in like huge numbers or small numbers, etc. So as an example, let's consider what we did before. Our example was, instead of having x, maybe we have um, 100x. That's what we did when we changed from meters to centimeters. Okay? Um, what happened to our expected value? We made all our data 100 times bigger, so what happened to your expected value? Also 100 times bigger, right? So uh, 100x, if you've got a change of 100x, your expected value also goes up by 100 uh, times, right? But your variance, your variance did not, right? Did you notice that? Your variance, it changed in proportion to not 100, but 100 squared, very good. So in our case, that was 10,000, right? But then, to get from variance to standard deviation, what change did we make? What's the single operation you do to get from variance to standard deviation? Take the square root. So it overcomes this squaring change. You get back to whatever factor you introduced. Okay, whatever factor you introduced. Okay, so that's what happens when you make your data bigger or smaller, right? And that's just with this particular example. Then the last thing we did was what happens if you change the origin? Where do you start measuring from? So there's some constant that you add to every score or some constant that you subtract from every score. Uh, what were the things that we noticed? Um, about the expected value if for example if for example we said uh, x and then we subtracted what was it 0.02 2 centimeters because we we're in millimeters right? um, in meters right so what happened to the expected value how did it change our mean it it changed by this exact same factor did you agree if we had added something like if I decided oh I'm just gonna uh, make all of you taller, it would also have gotten taller, right? So therefore this change is identical, right? But then what did you notice about variance and standard deviation? When you move everyone together, how does the spread of the data change? It, did it change? It didn't change. Our numbers are all the same on the spreadsheet, right? So you would say here, uh, there's no change. No change at all. In other words, you're just back at x. Right? Um, it's the same deal here. No change. You're just back at x. Okay? So, to show you how we can use this, right? Can you turn in your booklet, um, if you haven't gotten out already, go ahead, turn to page 46. Page 46. Once you get to page 46, there's a discrete random variable there, and we're going to have a look at how it changes. This is question 23. Booklets, booklets, good, good. Okay, fantastic. 20, uh, 46? 46, yes.
Okay. So, have a look at the question. You can see there's some data there. There's the discrete random variable in the table there. You can see that data. And um, then they say, calculate, instead of the expected value of this or the variance of this, they say calculate the expected value of this. Now what does this mean? Okay, It means two things. There's a change of scale that happens and there's a change of origin. The change of scale is, whatever the new scale is, it's going to be twice as big. Yeah, does that make sense? That's why there's the two there. And we also are going to shift all the values down. So our origin, where we begin measuring from, it also changes. Okay? Now we've got two options for how we can do this. Okay? We can do the spreadsheet route. Right? Do you remember what we did? We took every piece of data and then we like multiplied it by 100. And then we just recalculated. We just got Excel to do all the grunt work. Right? But now that we know all of this, we can kind of just work out the expected value as it is, and then make the adjustments necessary. So let's start off by doing that. Let's work out the regular expected value and get from there to here. I'll show you how to do it. We need the expected value first. So um, you'll need your calculator there. We're going to add up. It's always probability times value. Probability times value. So let's go ahead and do this. You're going to have to um, do a bit of crunching with me. <clears throat> what do we got here? Two point eight five. Fantastic. Okay, like so. All right. So before we move on to variance, we will get to that in a second. We actually already have all we need to go from here to here, right? Uh, yeah, we could do it in Excel. Uh, but in fact, because we've done the, the work in Excel, we can apply that knowledge here without needing to go to a spreadsheet. So we can just do it with our brains. It's not complicated, right? Um, have a look at my row here. I'm looking at expected value, right? So this expected value here is 2x minus 4, right? Is expected value changed by the change of scale? Yes. It, it is, right? And it's changed exactly in proportion to however much your scale changes, right? Is expected value also changed by the change of origin? The answer is yes, it will change by exactly the amount that you move it up or down. Okay? So therefore this is equal to double right, that expected value that we started with, right? just like we multiplied it. And then what's the other thing we do? We're not going to subtract 0.02, we're going to subtract, in this case, uh, 4. That's how much they've changed it by. Right? So this is double 2.85 Take away four. Um, do we have an answer? Five. Sorry. One point seven. Yeah, because five point seven take away four. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's five point seven take away four gives me one point seven. Okay. Now. Just thinking. You were thinking the steps through. Yeah, it's fine. You're like five point seven take away four one point seven. Okay. Now. If you like, you can actually take this data here, you can pop it into that spreadsheet that we created, and you will be able to verify this. It's totally fine, right? 